he wants to sentence for the higher end, obviously, I want to sentence for the lower end. But he's right. You know, people deserve to have faith in the, in the people who work for public, for, uh, public service. People deserve to have some confidence in their elected officials and people who work for them. Sharon Scanlon knows that. What, what uh, Mr. Waller points out, I think, is a recognition that all of us are flawed, no matter who they are. I tell people I've made a living representing people who act ira who, uh, otherwise rational and logical people who act irrationally. We all do that. Every one of us who's ever had a kid who's yelled or struck a kid when they're angry, there are very few of us who haven't done that, know that that's wrong. What Mr. Lowell points out that this was a series of, of conduct, and that makes it even more almost inexplicable. But it points out as well the flaw in Ms. Galen's ability to cope with her situation. This would be an easier case as others in this courtroom if we had a woman here who had a bunch of show horses at a ski, a ski chalet in Vermont, if she had a problem, if she'd been going up to the and son, but it's not. Mr. Lawler properly recognized this is a good person. You can't read these letters without being moved. She is a family person. The one particular letter, I'm not going to go on it. Like, you want to read through these? I know, um, and, and, you know we're, I don't intend to put on a, a, a show for the, the media here. But the, the, the one letter that I remember reading was by her, I believe her sister in law. Uh, it was actually two. One is when they came into the room, her, her, her mother-in-law was dying. Her mother, that was the sister-in-law's mother. Her mother-in-law was dying, and she was spoon feeding. You can't you can't listen or uh, read that without having an image in your mind of how that indicates the internal uh, strengths that this person has, which which, as Mr. Waller said, makes her actions even more inexplicable. Uh, and then. Uh, they recognized it was Sharon who was able to help make the decision that the mother-in-law should be removed from, from the life support. It was Sharon who helped out the friend who now dead who went through the stroke. So, uh, you know, what what has happened? What is going on here? Um, Your Honor recognizes that the, um, she has surrendered all of her retirement income, one. Two, she has uh, not objected to or allowed a lien to be placed against her house, which, as Mr. Waller points out, is worth some substantial money. Moreover, and, and, and as well, speaking now for the town of Shelton, they have been covered for the first half of the uncharged misconduct, basically, to $500,000, based on my analysis of the conduct of the auditors it is clear that the town of Shelton has a viable action against its auditors for being unable to uh, discover this course of conduct. This was about as simple of, uh, an event as could have occurred. Again, speaking to Ms. Uh, Ms. Scanlon's inability to cope with this, she would write a check, she would cash it, and would be listed as a void check. There was a lack of protection established by the auditors. There was a lack of review, actual review by the auditors. And this came about only because uh, an uncashed check was uh, laid around. Ms. Scanlon has never denied her responsibility for uh, doing what she's done. She is, as, as, as whoever wrote the, the gentleman who wrote, the gentleman who wrote the pre-sentence report, uh, Mr. Heller, did a wonderful job. He really did. He, he took in, took in all the information. The information, the, the back story to Ms. Scanlon is that she uh, she married essentially her high school sweetheart. They've been together 33 years. They've obviously gone through substantial difficulties now. She had earlier in her marriage three miscarriages, which had a substantial effect on her because her life is her family. Uh, in 09, I believe it was, she had breast cancer. She had to undergo two surgeries, a number of chemotherapy treatments, and radiation as well. And somewhere in there, her husband fell off the roof and broke, 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 her, broke his legs, which caused her to have to care for him. 
And it was during that time that, that the effect of that injury on him and the disruption of the family significantly affected her children. She is, just to give a sense of where she is with respect to her family, she lives next door to her mother. Her dream would be to have her daughter live next door to her. That's how devoted to her family she is. And what that tells you, I think, is there's a certain imbalance when you look at life that uh, internally and that focus, that you're unable to appreciate um, the broader dimensions of what life is and what your responsibilities are. For her, that imbalance was, my priority is to take care of my family. Much of the explanation, and perhaps not the full one, you did uh, stay the student. The, early on, they took out a mortgage on that house, and they, then they incurred uh, credit card debt, and much of the money that was spent, or taken, went to go to pay off uh, um, uh, the interest on both the credit card and the, uh, the mortgage. The, at one point, I think there was an $11,000 monthly debt that they had, uh, they tried to handle. And it was this family who took on that responsibility. The further aspect of this, the further facet of this,